Hello, good morning. Um, we're back on the Music to Grief to list, and I'm again, once again, joined by the incomparable Sharon from Grief Reiki. Sharon, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Happy Monday, happy Soccer Monday. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of Brazil, but oh, I'd love Mexico to win. I know they're 1-0 down at the moment, and you're probably not watching us because you're watching the game, but did you see that when Mexico beat the Germans, there was a oh, seismic yeah. event in Mexico City? That was kind of amazing. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting time. I mean, there's a, a lot going on in the world. It is a crazy time. But um, you know, we're on the Music to Grief Two channel, and we're here to um, we're here to talk you know, music and grief and, and things around that. Um, so we're, we're going to dip back into the relationships again because it's been driven by this amazing song. So the track of the week for last week, and uh, I'm not sure if we're going to roll it into this week. We'll see. Is this brilliant track called "Let You Go" by um, this Irish singer songwriter? Uh, called K Full Flaherty. And um, just by chance, we were in Dublin a few weeks back and, um, you know, we were, we were looking for live music and Whelan's is one of these you know, fabulous old um, bars that's well known for live music. And it's got a couple of different venues. And we just heard this amazing kind of, I heard this amazing guitar and voice coming from one of the uh, areas. We were like, stuff it, we're going in. And he was brilliant. Um, so we got the EP and, you know, two weeks ago we had one of the tracks on there, The Head and the Hearts. Well, that's the EP, but uh, Two Hearts, which is this beautiful song to fall in love in. And then you know, remember your loved one when we leave. But this new track is unreleased. So it's not even out on an EP or you can't stream it. You can only play the video that he's posted on Facebook. And it's that classic, um, you know, when you're in love and you're in a relationship and the other one is left. And you're the one who's still in love with the person and it keeps you awake at night and you can't, you know, as he says in the song, you know, I can't let you go. This kind of grief is, I mean, it's awful, isn't it? It's just, how do you, I mean, it inspires all these amazing songs. I mean, so many people go through that kind of grief, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a universally... Um it's something everybody goes through at some point in their lives, unfortunately. And it's probably one of the most painful grief experiences we can have, especially when you're still in love. I mean, I always tell people one of the hardest things to do is let go of someone or have them let go of you from a relationship perspective um, when you're still in love and you're, you're left just completely in shock. You know, it's like you're, mind can't even grasp what happens. And I think um, having been there myself on several occasions, um, yeah, it sucks. It's one of, it's, it's so tough. It really is. What got me about the track is, because if you haven't seen it, you, you know, we'll, we'll put the link down. It is that, I mean, it starts off kind of all quiet and slow. And it's that, you know, I remember going through it myself and, you know, he talks about you know, that you can't sleep because you can't because you're lying in bed, you're thinking and how all the words and all the conversations that you had mm -hmm. with that person that you love, you know, you just replay them, you know, backwards in your head. And it does. It's just like I, I, I was unable to turn it off. And clearly, you know, he's unable to turn it off. But then it grows because you get into that horrific, vicious down cycle where, you know, you can't sleep. So you're up and you're thinking about it. And then that makes it worse because you get the lack of sleep. And then, you know, the intensity of it increases. And, you know, he's halfway through the song and he's almost shouting out. And you can just feel that emotion and know exactly where it was. I, you know, I was the same, you know, a couple of times. I mean, is there anything that we can do for that kind of grief? 
Well, yeah, I think it goes back to the discussions we've had previously about unresolved grief, right? Because it goes into all the, you know, woulda, coulda, shouldas, because you play that over and over in your head. And there are ways to resolve that, right? Is to go back and think of the things that you wish you could say, you could write them down in a letter. I mean, maybe you don't want to send it to the person if the breakup wasn't amicable, but I find that writing and getting it out of your head and on paper or in a journal is often, or in music, I mean, you know, that's another wonderful way to get those thoughts out because we tend to play them over and over in our computer that's in our head and it really can drive you crazy. And so finding a constructive way to let those things out, that unresolved grief. Um, and then I think we've also talked about the fact that, you know, those hopes and dreams for the future, right, you know, are gone. So trying to to make peace with that, which is very difficult to do, but I think writing it and getting it out and saying the things, you know, I always use John Mayer. John Mayer has that wonderful song, Say What You Need to Say. Um, writing it down or, you know, talking to somebody else and just saying all those things, gosh, I wished I had done this or I'm so sorry that I did that. And, um, you know, becoming complete with those things so that you can let them go and move forward. Because the more we hold on to them, the more they manifest in things that aren't healthy, like, you know, anger and resentment and worry and anxiety and all of that. So trying to find healthy ways to let that go is, is tough, but very important. It's, it's really letting it go. And I was just, that John Mayer song, he says those words, say what you need to say like a billion times in that song, doesn't he? I mean, it's like, I remember listening to it and you get to the end and you're like, no, no, please do say what you need to say because then he can stop asking you to do it. But it's the, um, it's how do you let things go? And you know, I remember from my own experiences, yes, the, the, you look, you play back your conversations that you've had in the past and sure, that hurts. But the real one that sticks a dagger in your heart, to quote Anna Arco, is, is the projected loss of things that you were going to do together. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that like, oh my God, and we were gonna go on vacation here, or we plan to do this, or we're gonna go to that part. And you just realize that that future, that, you know, that was gonna make life all right, was gonna make life great, is just gone. And, that's the bit that makes me curl up on the floor in a fetal shape and just, you know, pull my eyes out. So would you, because I can understand writing down things I would say in the past, but how do you, how do you use the writing tool to, you know, alleviate or address things that are, that will no longer be in the future? Well, I mean, that a lot of that is forgiveness, right? And when you're writing, you can say things like, you know, I forgive you for the fact that we're not going to have the life that we plan to have. And I forgive, you know, myself that, you know, we we aren't going to be able to be the family that I wanted to have. All of those kinds of things. You can also write that from a, a future uh, perspective as well. And I think that sometimes is the most important. And I know it's the same, you know, with divorce, any kind of breakup is because you have all of those plans, right? You have those plans for the things that you're going to retire together or you're not, or you're going to travel the world. And, and it doesn't mean that those things can't happen in a different way, but you sort of have to come to terms with the fact that, you know, it's over and you have to let it go. And that's that's so difficult to do. But you can write about those things as well, not only just the past, but the future. You know, I, I grieve for, you know, the children that we're never going to have, or I grieve for, you know, the, the vacation home that we were going to buy and never did. And, you know, all of those things. So I think it's important to let that sadness that's associated with it, whether it's writing or crying or, you know, screaming or going to therapy or, or whatever it is, is to get it out so that you can, you know, set yourself free, basically. I mean, you look at it, I mean, it's just so um, interesting. I mean, you look at this track by Kayla, I Can't Let You Go. I mean, where does that come from? But the passion in which he sings it, you know, you've got to think he's felt it. But even Adele, I mean, her whole career was still, I mean, the explosive 21 was built around, you know, being the one who was left in love. And I mean, it certainly generates, it's certainly grist for the artistic mill, isn't it? 
Well, yeah, I think of Sam Smith. I mean, wasn't his first album was totally all about being broken up with somebody and, and how he felt after that. And I mean, he's even said himself how therapeutic it was to write about it and to create the music and to let it go rather than holding it on inside of him and holding it, you know, his body holding on to it. So I think whatever somebody can do creatively, whether like you said, it's writing or music or, you know, some people love to be artistic, you know, and I mean, look at Jim Carrey, some of the paintings that he paints, right. Is, is getting that, um, you know, that those feelings that he has inside out, you know, maybe some people want to knit or, you know, paint houses or whatever it is. I think it's just finding whatever that outlet is, you know, that's constructive, you know, not beating up people or, or whatever, but finding a constructive outlet um, for like kickboxing or, or, you know, whatever it is to get those things out. Because what if you're not creative? What if you're not one of these people who naturally takes to a journal or, you know, sits at a piano or, you know, has an easel or whatever? I mean, what other avenues are there to get this out? Well, I think, you know, everybody has something inside of them. Maybe it's a passion for something. Maybe it's not necessarily considered creative, so to speak. Um, but maybe it's, you know, it's walking. I mean, I've talked a lot about walking. Maybe that feeds your soul. I think whatever it is that feeds your soul is important. So, you know, maybe volunteering at an animal shelter, you know, and taking care of animals is something that feeds your soul and kind of brings those feelings inside because you're giving to something else, you know, helping children or volunteering to um, work with old people. I mean, again, I think it's a matter of what's inside of you, whether it's creative or not. Everyone has some passion that they love to do, even if it's as simple as, you know, walking, taking a hike, going, you know, going up to the Hollywood Hills and taking a hike and sort of, you know, working through physically, working through all of those difficulties. So I think there's lots of ways to do it. It's just individual and unique for every person. I guess it makes absolute sense, but it, it's it's a physical act, isn't it? There, there's, um, there's a behavior that you need to do that facilitates the, you know, the ability to let something go. Yeah, but, I think you're absolutely right. And our bodies hold on to those kind of emotions, especially when we're devastated and angry and lost and, you know, our bodies just tighten up. So finding ways, you know, to let your body rest, whatever that is, like I said, walking or yoga or tennis or one-on-one -on -one basketball or, you know, shooting pool or, or whatever it is to kind of just get that release um, even going somewhere, I was looking at the Comedy and Magic Club in um, Hermosa, and they've got that those 20 comedians for $20, right? I mean, just having a good laugh. Um, sometimes you don't feel like laughing, but if you go somewhere where, you know, you know they're going to be funny, and just having your body just sort of release that laughter um, is also very healing. I mean, laughter and crying are so close together, aren't they, in terms of what they do? Just if we haven't touched on this for a while, but so how would Reiki help? Well, Reiki works in so many different ways. And I think for from my experience, what I see with clients is that Reiki addresses the emotions, the physical and the spiritual. And so oftentimes when I'm doing Reiki, because it relaxes the body, I find that people often start crying, especially people who are going through a difficult time. I remember the first time I received Reiki and I had no idea what to expect because my body was always so tightly wound, you know, working in my job in DC when I laid, you know, on the massage table and I just kind of felt myself finally slow down for a moment. You know, as soon as she started doing Reiki and my body was relaxing more and more, the tears just came pouring out of my face. It was like they had been stuck in there for so long because I was like, darn, if I'm going to cry. And I think, you know, Reiki has the ability to, because it relaxes you physically, it opens the door for those emotions to come out. So you kind of feel safe in a Reiki session because it's just me, nobody else cares. And you can sort of safely release those things, um, not only within your body, but, you know, within within your emotions and kind of let them out. And um, I can't count how many 
Reiki sessions I've had with people, especially grievers, where, you know, they either slept through the whole thing, which is good because you don't sleep when you're grieving, but who also, you know, cried through the whole thing. So it was just such a relief for them to finally just feel safe enough to let those things go. So Reiki is very powerful in that way. It really is. The, the, I mean, the whole central idea, if I look at all our conversations over the months, is this, you know, whether it's a breakup or, a, you know, a loss of a loved one or a loss of a job or whatever it is that, that happens that, you know, is affecting you emotionally, that's generating this grief. The number one, not the number one, but the whole purpose of, you know, having this discussion is that you've got to, it's got to get out, isn't it? <laughs> you, you've got to create uh, a mechanic or a method, whether it's right, but it's in you, and you've got to somehow release it. And crying is a great way of doing that. You know, um, you know, talking about it is a great way of doing it. You know, writing it down is a great way of doing it. Expressing it in exercise is a great way of doing it. But if I was to you know take the ten thousand foot view, it's recognizing that it exists and then creating an environment or a space or a behavior that allows it to get out. And that is ultimately how you deal with it. I mean, what does that sound like? No, that sounds perfect. It sounds like you can now teach the classes, right? It's it's all about, it, it is, it's all about letting it go. And we just live in a society where we're told to like, fake our way through the day and not be authentic. And it really gets back to being your authentic self and grief isn't a negative. It can be a difficult experience, but it's a part of being human. And so however you release what's inside of you is just so much healthy for you emotionally, physically, and spiritually, especially for your body, because, you know, you end up with ulcers and heart attacks. It's like, you know, let it go, put it on your schedule. We talk a lot about that. If you don't have time, you know, take an hour and just go sit in your car and cry or whatever it is, you know, put it on your schedule so that you don't keep pushing it away and pushing it away. So eventually, you know, you just feel like you're about to burst. And, and unfortunately, some people do physically or, or emotionally, right? All right. Uh, well, Lots of lots of tools and tips and tricks. Um, alrighty. So if you haven't, go listen to Kefal. It's amazing. Um, and I'm sure you know a lot of us out there can uh, relate to where he's at with the track. Um, and who have you got on the uh, Grief Reiki chat this week? Um, actually, I have Lisa Ingracia, who is a Huffington Post um, writer on The Mighty. She's written all kinds of articles about losing her dad. And when my dad died, her, her site's called A Daughter's Love. And when my dad died, I found her and I was just so moved because her words were like, you know, the things that are in your head that you wish you could say. Um, her words about losing her dad, I believe he had a um, cancer swallowing disorder. She's a big cancer advocate. Um, yeah, just touched me. So I'm excited to talk to her tomorrow. Very cool. If you want to put the link down below, um, that would be awesome. All right. Sharon, as ever, it's brilliant. Um, hope to see you next week. Have a fabulous week. And um, viva Mexico. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Bye.